Hello, Ken Spriggs here with part two and the finale of my uh, 2001 uh, Dave Bowman in his astronaut suit replacing the AE-35 unit. Uh, so a uh, lot of work this week uh, completing the base for him. A ton of scratch building, a whole bunch of styrene and styrene stripping. Um, but I got it all completed and, um, and then I'm ready to to show the reveal for Dave Bowman uh, in this build. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so I'm, uh, I'm trying to make a, um, a visor that goes on the inside of the helmet. This is the 3D printed piece. I just printed that in uh, gray. And um, I had been talking to Richard Steers. Uh, he's, he's also making, he's working with um, another um, builder called Carl Darby designer actually and they've made or they're making a um their own version of of dave seated to fit inside of um the pod the mobius pod and so he had mentioned to me about a visor and that he might have one that i could use um his is probably going to be a little smaller in addition he lives in new zealand so that's going to be a bit of a problem just to have him mail it to me just to be the wrong one so so what I did was I decided to go ahead and get my own little vacuum for machine. <clears throat> I got this for uh, $79 at Michael's, not too bad. It doesn't have its own vacuum built in, but you can plug a hose in the back and it just goes to my vacuum right there. All you need is a vacuum. Um, it has the heater on top, which right now is heating up. It's pretty cool. It's got the, um, it's got a heating element up there. It's starting to get pretty hot. You have your, um, out your plastic which is right now inside of the the two halves and this is all magnetic these two fit together magnetically and sandwiches the plastic in between these little metal parts here are magnets that um that clip up on the top so when you stick it up there after it heats up for 10 minutes you let the hit the plastic heat up and then you just uh you just slide it down over top of that form and i'll put this on there and then it will do a vacuum form version of my um of my helmet so um he gave me some other ideas too this piece is just open and curved so he suggested that you don't want any overhangs you don't want any open parts on the sides so i took some epoxy sculpt and i just fashioned it inside of it so i filled in that whole area and have a little bit of overhang on both sides or a little bit of extra on both sides so that's ready to go inside so let me go ahead and um and put that in there, get it ready, and then we'll um, we'll see how that works. Okay, not too bad. Now, I don't need this whole piece. I just need the part in the middle that is the visor. So I can cut around all the rest of it carefully without you know, doing any harm to it. But that, that's a nice little shape of the visor. I think that's gonna work just great. So let me get that cut out and we'll go ahead and test it and see how it's working. All right, and here's my first attempt at the visor. I think it turned out really well. I'm going to do some more of them, but it has that right curve. The trouble with this one, of course, which is why I wanted the vacuum form, is that it not only curves this way, but it curves up and down. So you have a distinctive bulge sticking out and curving on the front. So let me put it in the helmet and show you what that's going to look like. All right, there we go. So looking pretty cool. It's not in there exactly straight. It's going to have to be glued into place but definitely looks much better with that distinctive curve on it still nice and clear so you can see his face pretty sweet and I'm going to play with some different materials too this plastic is very thin so it's it has you know it's just a little flimsier but I have some other ones I can try and some styrene and things like that so okay 
but that's definitely going to work really good so really happy with my um, vacuum form machine so excellent 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 thank you to richard steers for giving me some pointers and some tips on how to how to position that 3d part so i could get the best kind of a print from it so so it's definitely going to work out well really happy with that and it gives me some options in the future too if i need to vacuum form anything else that's an that's a clear shape that i can't just use styrene so all right All right, so here's my second test. You can just kind of make out underneath that clear dome. That's the plastic drooping down. It's almost ready. There's my piece ready to go. It's gonna get kind of noisy except on my vacuum cleaner, which is gonna make it really noisy. And then you'll show, I'll show you dropping it down and it'll, uh, it'll vacuum form. So let me see here. Yep, that should do it. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do it. <laughs> there we go so pretty cool let me get and pull that off there and show you that one all right so that part that i that i molded with the epoxy is called comes out really easy that's why you can't have any overhangs because it would get stuck in there okay so not too bad a little bit of where did i see that oh, right there on that edge you can see a little bit of that is right along the lip because the actual piece is just, you can see that line division right here and right up here. So that's just right on it right there. But again, I'm just kind of playing with it. I want to get some other styrene. I want to get like some regular uh, sheet styrene, something a little thicker than this and see how well that works. Try a few things and, um, and see what I can get to, um, to work on this and uh, get the final, the final shape that I want. But that's going to work really nicely. And that's going to give me a really cool looking uh, um, visor profile. You can see how it's curved coming down as well. It bulges out and then, of course, curves from side to side. So, okay, but working really good. Um, this came with four sheets of this plastic, and that's one of the only downsides. You have to use a whole sheet because you have to sandwich it in between this area, and it's got to be in there secure or it won't work right. Um, I did buy a, a separate pack of six more of them, so I have plenty. The sec second pack was like uh, $6, $7. It wasn't too bad. To about a dollar a piece. Not too bad. And I can get some other styrene, like I said. Tomorrow I'll go out to the hobby shop and um, just pick up some, some thin styrene. I think this is like .20 if I'm not mistaken. So maybe I'll try something a little thicker. You can't do it too thick because it's got to heat up and melt and be able to uh, soften enough to do that. So, okay, but definitely a good proof of concept. Definitely going to work to give me a nice, uh, properly shaped visor. All right, so one other little detail that I did on him is um, his suit does not contain the hose that goes from the backpack on the top up to his helmet. So I followed, um, I've seen this before with some other people online. Uh, they just use some guitar string. So here's some guitar string that I got. And it looks pretty cool. It's silver, and it's metal, and it looks like a wound cable. So um, I just cut out a piece and I put it onto the, um, let me get it over here. So it goes in that really top, that top piece right there. And it goes right into the side of his helmet right there. So pretty sweet. 
definitely adds to the realism of the uh, of the figure. So looking pretty awesome. Okay. All right, so I'm starting on the um, the base for Dave Bowman, the astronaut, with all of this little mess going on. So as I showed in the previous stills, I took a picture of the really tiny satellite dish that I have for the Discovery, and I blew it up so it would be the right size for this and figured out where it's going to be. So I've been cutting pieces off and um, and starting to make them into what they ought to be. First thing I did was I made like a rough circle around where there's going to be a um, like a band of some strip styrene that I'm going to use. And what I'm going to be using is some half round stock like this. And I'm just going to curve it around. Now, I didn't put it on yet because a lot of this is going to be covered by the big antenna mechanism. But there's still going to be some right here and there's going to be some around the edge the outer edge then there's going to be bands that are going down like this going down the sides that look like this and make up the outer radius of this uh, but it was missing one of the ones in the middle so i went ahead and just measured it out and figured out where i wanted it to be so I'll get that put on once I get the rest of it done. So what I'm working on right now is the main big housing. So I cut out this big piece, which will span the entire thing. Part of it's going to curve down to here, then it's going to come out, and then it's going to be a bigger, there's going to be a couple other pieces coming out the sides, and there's going to be a bigger part right in here. So I'm going to get the main structure built first. So I, I cut this out, kind of made sure that I measured the different sides. So they're all the same. And then I started taking some pieces and I'm building up the sides of it. So this one's gonna be curving down. I'll probably still have to sand some of this down so it matches the curve of this, this little sphere, dome, whatever. And then the rest of it is gonna be fairly straight, but it's gonna angle down this way and this way. So once I get that all worked out, then I can add on the other pieces and I can cut out where I want to put like the, the big housing for the AE35 unit, add on some other bits and pieces and try to make it accurate, so, all right. All right, so I put some sides on this top part and I kind of sanded them with my Dremel to make them a bit curved match up I did a little bit on the front there too and then I have the other side over here so there's the general look so far which looks pretty cool and it'll be finished a lot more once I get this on it doesn't have to be perfect I'm going to put some stripping along it to meld those areas to the dish these have to be cleaned up a little bit as well All right, so I looked over some more images from the from the, the movie and realized that these were way too thin, so I made them a lot beefier. Uh, these two side, this side piece here, has to be at least as thick this way as the AE35 unit uh, because it actually literally has a mag hold on two of them and it sits on there. So I made it considerably thicker. Uh, it's still not quite as thick, but I wanted to keep it within a certain reasonable. Um, length there so I did the same thing with this part so I took off the other pieces so this is going to 
This one curves up onto here. And this one curves down like this. And this isn't going to come to a thin point like I was originally doing because really there's a lot more of this that continues on. This is only a little subsection of the whole dish. So this will just have a piece on the end of it. I might even be able to, well, we'll see. I'll make it so it just has a piece on the end. And the same with, with back here. It's going to come to a squared off end, but it really isn't square, obviously. And I may still curve that back a little bit too. We'll see. Okay, so definitely much better, much more on track with this piece. All right. All right, so a lot more progress on the structure for the antenna array. So I got these pieces on here and the side parts on them as well, which are supposed to be the supports coming out and kind of curving up a bit. Uh, and I got some uh, couple pieces here because this part here is actually sticking out even further because it leads to another part, the thicker part, which goes out like this to the sides and meets up with the two smaller side dishes. And again, it's hard to wrap your mind around it because you keep wanting to think this is the main dish. This is not. This is the center of the main dish. The main dish is much bigger, like twice as big. So these are coming out for the side pieces for the two smaller ones. These are coming out as supports onto the side, but it'll all look good when it comes together. So I got those pieces on. I cut out the little section for the, um, AE35 unit because it's actually set down in a little bit and I cut out a piece right here so the way it works is the top lip is level with this and then it angles down and there's a bit of a deep of an incline into it and then you have a little piece in the middle where you have the two little mechanisms that he turns I guess mechanism th things to unlock it and it opens up the whole lid and he puts the unit down inside and it goes straight down inside so this doesn't have to be the length of the actual unit so okay all right let me keep working on that but coming along really nice So I just about finished the main structure of the antenna array raised parts, getting ready to glue it down onto this dome. So the last piece I have to last pieces I have to do would be these parts right here. The back is just going to be flat. And it's the idea is that it is going to continue on further down, but we're only seeing a subsection. So this is just going to be flat. I'm not going to try to round it off or anything like that um, but I can put these two pieces on and measure them off pretty easily once I get it all glued into place so you can see I have it all taped on right now sorry for the, the noise um, just to kind of get an idea of how it's all gonna fit and I have a lot of pieces like this right here that are going to glue together once I sink it down onto or glue it down onto the disc and you can see I added on these parts because this part is shaped like that. I miscalculated and didn't do it right in the first place. Um, I do have the, um, the hatchway for the AE35 unit in there. I put two little levers in it and put some, some round stock around it. So that part in the middle, I believe it's going to be silver. Pretty much everything else is going to be like white or a slightly off-white. Probably what I'm going to end up doing once I get it all glued together and all the extra stuff on it. I'm going to get a coat of primer over it, <clears throat> make sure there's no issues, and then mist it over with flat white. Uh, and then um, 
paint on some little details like some silver here and put on some decals that kind of thing so okay so let me go ahead and get this main structure glued down onto the disc and let that get nice and secure overnight and then i'll be ready to go ahead and start finishing up the back and then adding on all the other things like the panel lines the panels and uh the the bit of uh striping that's going to come down that kind of thing so and around the edge all right All right, so I'm using uh, three different sizes of uh, some round, half round stock styrene. I have uh, 0 0.060, 0 0.080, and 0 0.100 of these, um, of all the same half rounds. And I'm using them to, um, to fill in the gaps around where this connects onto this base. So I got the whole front part done. You can see where I just built it in around there. And once it gets all painted, it's going to look, it's going to look natural and it's going to blend in. Have it up around the edge of those. All right. Uh, I'm going to wait and see. I don't know if I'm going to put any around the edges or not. I may just get those sanded smooth. And then um, if I need to, I can use a little bit of Bondo on that just to smooth it out. But I've also sanded the edges. And um, I just use cheap dollar store emery boards. I think those are the easiest. You have the rough side and the and the um, little less rough side, but they work good as far as cleaning up just some general things and they're very inexpensive, obviously. So, all right, uh, I still have to do the back of it and I still have to finish the back part there. Uh, I went ahead and put in an aluminum tube that's just the right size to accommodate the tube that um, is coming out of Dave's leg and it comes out of the bottom there. Nice and epoxied in place. So when I'm ready to, I can just slide him right down into that. And I don't even really have to glue him permanently. I can just uh, slide him down into it, cut it to the right length so he's just hovering over top. And I've decided to have him facing this way. Uh, he is kind of facing the other direction in the film and looking down, but uh, I don't really want this to be the front of the base when it's all flat and everything. This is going to be the better part to look at. So we'll be facing this direction. So, okay. All right. I'm going to use the same different uh, half rounds to do things like the, um, the circular radiations coming around here and this edge. And then to do the smaller one to do like the lines that come down this way all around it. And then that back little part right there too. There's just a little bit right there. So, okay, but come along really nicely. Um, once I get that all done, then I'll be ready to go ahead and start putting on some little panels and details around here also, so, okay. Okay, so a lot more work done on my base. So I finished the trim around all of the sections except for these parts right here because they're a little short and I need to put on some extra pieces here to fill that in. Um, I finished the back, I got the back on. I had to cut off a little bit of that in order to make it flat because I didn't want to have to worry about angles. Because in the, in the back, it's just supposed to be cut off. You're not gonna see it, that's the back of the base. And it's not, it's not really supposed to be going like this or anything, so it was easier just to cut off a part of that bottom and then just put a lot of epoxy in there to make it nice and solid. So, all right, so what I'm working on now, I, um, I sanded down the black part in order to make it a little more re um, receptive to the glue. And I started gluing in the larger strip, the 0 .100 uh, half round in order to get the concentric circle on the center, which is missing on the, um, the little mini dish that I mentioned earlier. And I'll put another one of those around the edge <clears throat> and also around this edge right here on the backs. And then from there, I'll start with the other lines, thinner ones coming down 
this way and this way too to finish up the rest of the dish looking parts. And at that point, um, I'll just have to start working on some more of the detail on these parts here, some extra panels and that kind of thing to really flesh it out. And we'll be ready to start going ahead and priming it. All right. All right, so I redid these top rings because they looked a little too thick. And looking at some of the images, I have to have 10 of the the radial or whatever you call it, one's coming out this direction, which would be too thick if they were this thickness. So I decided to go with the um, with the 0.8 for this instead of the 0 0.1, 0 0.08, I'm sorry. And then um, I'm gonna use the 0.06 to come down this way, but I'm still using the 0 0.100 for the bottom. So to kind of get a curve and make it look like it is rounded, I, I try to bend it with my fingers, but I go ahead and I, um, I glue on one end and then the other end. Once those set up and are secure, I can then pull this down to a normal curve, let it kind of curve on its own and glue it down so it looks like it's supposed to be the proper curve. So, all right. All right, so I finished all of the um, half round stripping around uh, the antenna dish to give it that, um, that distinctive look for the back of the dish that has those, uh, those lines. I looked at some of the stills to try to figure out how many, and there are 10 of them that go around on the bottom here. And then there's just one here, and then there's three in the middle, one more here, then three, then one more. These don't have them all the way to the top. And the same at this side over here. So I got those all finished. I did the little pieces in the back here to make it look like it continues on through it. And over here as well. So really coming together, starting to look like the antenna dish, much more so than just a um, the part on top of it. Now you're starting to see the whole image of it being that center part of the dish. I put a piece on the front there to finish that off and on the two sides. I have to clean those up just a little bit. But it's all pretty much now built as far as the main structure. Uh, the only thing I have to do now is go back and add on some little bits of paneling and details and things like that. And then once I get all those pieces on, there's going to be some more back here as well along the sides of these. Uh, I just have to then um, do the final painting. I'm going to finish up this base, so really looking quite fantastic. Really happy with how that's turning out. Uh, so uh, let me go ahead and finish up on the detailing. And uh, very coming very close to getting this wrapped up. All right, so I'm starting the detailing on the... Um, on my dish base. And so I'm just using some 0.015 thickness styrene, which is very thin. And I'm cutting out some pieces, just using a, a metal roller and an X-Acto knife. And then just gluing them on and trying to keep them somewhat uniform on either side. They're by no means accurate, but um, they do kind of capture the image that you see on the display or on the, uh, the dish uh, to kind of add some pieces. Put a couple in here, some along here. I'm gonna do some more along this part here and then some along the sides of these to go ahead and add a little bit more detail, so, okay. All right, so um, since I'm making parts that are gonna match each other, an easy way to do that, since I'm going to have a piece here that's going to be the same on the other side, I just cut out the first piece and I just eyeballed it to get the right curves 
So I wanted it to be angled down. And then I just took my Dremel with a, um, with a sanding tip. This is a very useful tip. I use this a lot. But the reason is because it, because it's rounded. If you just slowly start it through the plastic and it comes through, it always makes a round hole. It keeps it nice and round for you unless you move it around. So if you keep it nice and steady, you can get a nice round hole. Then you can cut out the rest with an X-Acto knife. And then I use this round needle file to just uh, finish off the rough edges of it. And once I did one piece, I simply traced it over top of the styrene and made a second piece. So I have the same dimensions. Just be sure to reverse it when you glue it onto the kit. So let me go ahead and get those glued onto there as well. Okay, so there we go. So I have... That one glued on that side, this one over on this side. So now they're the same and they match up and I can add a little bit more detail with some styrene stripping onto them as well. So, okay, come along really well. All right, so I'm making some side panels for the front of these two things. So I used the same technique. So I created one first, got the right curves that I wanted. Then I just replicated it on another side. And I'm using some, um, some styrene tube to just cut off a little tip of it. This bigger one that right here. This larger one here. And, um, and then gluing those down, look like some kind of ports. And once I get them glued on, I can take an emery board and just sand them a little smoother and make a better profile. Then I use some really thin styrene strip and just put those little bits there on both sides. Another little thin piece that I cut out, mirrored and just put it on there. So there we go. So it looks like some nice detail, but really easy to do. So now I'm ready to go ahead and get these just glued on the sides right there. So, all right, all right, there we go. So it looks great. Another thing I don't know if I mentioned, but to glue all this down, I'm using Plastrec Bondine cement solvent. It's made for uh, styrene ABS plastic. It's made by Plastrec, which makes obviously a lot of this stripping that I'm using. Um, so it goes on it, with really well with capillary action. So basically I can just hold this in place sort of in the middle, dab on some glue on both ends. It sets up very quickly in a few seconds. Uh, then I can let it go and then I can dab it around the other edges and it goes in really, really nicely. A trick that I like to do is you don't want to touch it because if you touch some of the bondine, it leaves a fingerprint. It melts the plastic really quickly. So what I do is I use this to tap it and hold it in place because in the edge of this isn't really going to leave a mark and then uh, and again get it held down really well. So, okay, coming along really nicely. So I have some detail up front there, some back on the back. There isn't going to be any over here because I'm going to have the the mag hold decals over here. And I find there is another mag hold one over here too, so I'll probably put one right there once I start working on the decals, so. Okay, so let me keep working. I need to work on some of this in the back and maybe in the back of these and then uh, get all the detail wrapped up on this. Right, and I'm gonna call this completed. I could just keep going and adding more detail on, but I think that looks really, really cool. Really brings out the idea of the different panels and the different things on the um, on the dish. And like I said, by no means is this accurate, screen accurate in any way. I'm not looking for that. I know that the dimensions are off by quite a bit, but I had to work with what I was working with with the, um, the AMT base and, um, and just kind of going by some of the images I got from the, sh from the movie because I just could not find an image of the back of this far enough away to get some real good detail because the scene isn't very long. It's a very short scene. It's only a few minutes and nobody has any 
any blueprints of this apparently because I couldn't find those either. I can see a lot of pictures of the front of the dish, even the dish itself, like the prop, but uh, but really nothing from the um, from the back, which is what I'm looking at. So okay, so I am calling it done. I'm going to go ahead and get a coat of primer on this, and then I'm going to uh, get it painted, and then just the decals, and that will wrap up the base. All right, and I went ahead and got a primer coat on it and let that dry. And then I put on a coat of flat white, just some testers, flat white spray in a can. So that definitely brings it all together and makes it look like one whole uh, dish rather than the darker parts and the, and the styrene parts. I think that turned out really, really nice. Put that up here. All right, I'm not going to do any weathering on this because it looks really clean and really bright white in the film. So I'm just going to leave it that way. I am going to paint the little levers there and that little oval shaped thing silver, chrome silver, which it looks like in the film. And then I'm going to make some decals to put onto this in this general area. And that'll wrap this up. So looking fantastic. Really happy with that. I also got a coat of uh, primer and paint on the aluminum tube coming out of uh, the figure that's gonna go down through this little hole so I could make, make it the same color. Cause the white over the gray just gives it just a slightly off white tone, just barely. So it's not just pure white. And, um, and plus the, the primer helps the paint to stick onto things like that black base and also the metal tube that I had so okay all right so we work on the decals and we'll get this finished up and then we'll go ahead and do the final reveal on uh, the Dave Bowman astronaut changing the AE35 unit All right, so I played with a lot of images and I printed out several on some paper and tested them out. Um, for the orange triangles, I just did all this in Microsoft Word. I just made a triangle and filled with orange. Same with the red circles. Uh, the little labels like this one here, this is just text. Uh, this is a label I got off the internet, so are these. And I just shrunk them down really small so you can't really read what they say because they don't say what they're supposed to say. So I started putting these on, and I think they look really cool. I just, well, I printed them out in vinyl, with the white vinyl. So there's the mag hold on the side. There's some labels here and this label on there, and the instructions for removing the AE35 unit. So really cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting those on, and I think those are gonna work pretty good rather than some decals. All right, and there are all of the vinyl stickers put onto the antenna array looking pretty sweet and i did notice in the uh video it's hard to tell when when he's just moving down towards this there is a mag hold on this part here too there's additional detail but i thought that was enough I'll turn it around here all right so i got some warning labels i have that little red circle some instructions on what to do, which you can't read, which is fine, because they really don't say anything about changing an AE35 unit. But they do look pretty cool. All right, so very happy with that base. It looks really sweet. It's all ready to go. All right, let me go ahead and get the, um, get the figure on here, and then we'll show the final reveal. And here is my completed Dave Bowman astronaut figure on 
my scratch build antenna base looking pretty sweet I just have him up against some black poster paper to give a dark background trying to get close in there Really, really nice sculpt of his face. I'm really happy with that. It's my vacuum form bubble that I made for his his helmet. A little bit of scratch building on the the front plate, front uh, pack. One of my decals. Another one on his shoulder and on the helmet. The AE35 unit, of course, getting ready to replace it. Let me get a little bit of a above view. And there's this backpack, of course. the little connectors into his suit that I did in now clad from the hoses and over here as well all right but looking fantastic all right let me show a few more stills uh, but that's gonna call this a wrap <laughs>